Mark Ostfeld from ADM Investor Services International with uh, a look at the reaction to last week's uh, FOMC meeting um, and uh, basically trying to base, uh, unravel some of the uh, rationalizations of moves which weren't necessarily correct. So let's start off with the key point in all of this. And uh, we start off with the Goldman Sachs US Financial Conditions Index. And as one can see, basically, we are still very much at the loosest conditions in financial market terms that we have been. And that's important because basically that is what drives risk appetite. And as long as those conditions, volatility is low, interest rates remain low, basically the risk appetite is going to be there. Now let's have a look what actually happened. So starting off um, there with the US 10-year yield, there were a lot of very sharp movements around the meeting. Initially, we spiked higher in terms of 10-year yields. Then we had a massive drive lower all the way down to 135, which people found quite surprising. And indeed it was, but it was basically all about people being positioned incorrectly and having to unwind their positions as the curve flattened and the uh, 10-year yields dropped. But ultimately, we've ended up in exactly the same place that we were before the meeting. So it was much ado about nothing. By contrast, the US two-year yield has definitely seen a step shift higher, but one can't actually put that down to anything to do with the overall policy outlook. It's not basically telling us that markets are, are now slightly more worried about a Fed rate increase. It's telling us about what they did with interest on excess reserves and on raising the rate on the reverse repo programs, which has been used very heavily. And this is all about collateral um, shortages of basically due to the Q they are basically creating a shortage of collateral in the repo market. Again, it's not to do with Fed policy. I was asked earlier in the week, so are commodity prices really that sensitive to dollar movements? And I think really what we've seen here, as we look at my fourth chart, which compares the US dollar index against the Bloomberg commodity price index, is yes, initially, in a certain sense, it's like the US 10-year yield move. We get a knee-jerk reaction, and then fundamentals start to reassert themselves. Thus, commodities basically took a slight dive, a knee-jerk dive as the US dollar index powered higher, but then started to revert to individual patterns. My fifth chart is basically to highlight how the impact has been very much differentiated across sectors. So this is the GSCI commodity price indices for the various sectors, industrials, livestock, agriculture, and energy. And what one can see there is that the industrials have had the most sensitivity, but really is that to in reaction to the spike higher in the dollar? And the answer is probably not. It's actually probably far more in reaction to Chinese interventions in the metal markets, the talk of releasing strategic reserves from um, its metal storage, and again, its fundamentals reasserting themselves. And interestingly, obviously, within all of that, it's notable how livestock basically didn't respond at all. So what about oil? Because I think this is probably the most interesting one of the lot. What one can see is that oil markets did respond to some extent to the spike higher that we had in the dollar. But then again, if one starts to look at the actual news flow of what was driving a lot of these moves, we've initially got a move which basically the rebound was initially powered higher by uh, news that a renewal of the JCPOA and thus uh, increase in Iranian production isn't likely anytime soon. Then we got news of uh, Russia basically pushing for an increase in production when OPEC next meets in July. It's the fundamentals of these markets reasserting themselves after re reaction. The, the last chart is the 12 month, i.e. first month versus 12th month uh, WTI spread. And really, that's telling us to my way of thinking, first of all, uh, that people don't expect so, uh, production basically not to meet any increase in demand. And secondly, uh, that uh, there is more than enough capacity there. And uh, th thirdly, also, uh, otherwise, one would be hearing about it. There's no real pressure on refiners to chase prices at any given level. They can always buy forward. So those are the thoughts for this week. Um, <clears throat> And we shall see how markets turn out over the coming week.